So what are we gonna do, guys? What's going on, guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Today, I want to talk to you guys yet again about this whole situation with Colin Moriarty and the Kinda Funny Gang. Uh, there's been some interesting developments that have been happening over the last 48 hours. And I wanted to talk to you guys about it and get your feel on it and really come to a consensus of, of where we're going to go as far as this channel, as far as this group of guys, how much support are they going to get? Are you going to continue to support them? Uh, how do you feel about this breakup? Was it amicable? Do you think that there's some undercover stuff going on that we don't know about? I wanted to kind of touch on all these subjects and kind of give you guys my opinion on what where Greg's head's at and where Colin's head is at. And kind of reveal some underlying truths that Colin put out there, but you have to kind of read between the lines to see where, where he's actually at emotionally. Because I, I believe that Colin's emotionally wrecked right now. And you know he's a very emotional guy. Uh, he might be more emotional than Greg, but he hides it a little bit better. And just watching him, you know, on the little video today, when they talked about Nintendo's Switch Indies, he seemed more out of it than usual. He seemed a little more distant than usual and slightly depressed. And you could kind of, you could smell it, you know, through the, the, the screen. Like, there's something definitely going on with this guy. And so I'm a follower of, of Colin Moriarty's and Greg Miller's on, twi on Twitter. I have been for a long time. And I, I've always thought that Colin was, you know, the, the more... He was the funnier of the two to me. You know, the, the, I've always enjoyed his thought process. You guys could tell that from my last video. But I wanted to see what he was saying and how he felt about this whole situation. Because we've heard from Greg and from Tim and from Nick, not from, from Colin, uh, that this is like an amicable thing. This is the breakup before the divorce. Everybody's happy. Everybody's healthy. Everybody wanted Colin to just go and fly and be free and, and blossom into the beautiful butterfly that he is that he just can't be for some reason on Kind of Funny. And I want to know if that was really true because watching it and getting the feel for it, I'm pretty good at, I can feel people out. You know, you can kind of tell this really isn't true. How dumb are we? Uh, and the Kind of Funny community it's kind of a really funny community, you know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of funny. These people, this is kind of the, the atmosphere that Greg Miller, uh, not so much Colin Moriarty, because I can't say that I ever recall him having an agenda, but Greg Miller and really Tim Geddes have been big proponents of the, I would call it, uber liberal agenda. Even on the, the Facebook group, which is a closed group, I'm actually part of it. There is this whole mindset that if you say anything that's controversial or something that could potentially uh, offend anyone, you're going to be silenced and removed. You know, this is not the kind of place where free speech is welcome. If you say something that others don't agree with or something that is not on cue with everyone else's mindset, uh, then you are the enemy and you need to be shouted down and removed. And that's something I found out very quickly in the kind of funny Facebook group. I had an incident maybe close to a year ago where I got into a debate with someone and, uh, you know, I had people coming after me who were moderators and you're going to be banned. You know, you can't say this about a person. You can't ask this. Why are you asking these questions? It seems like you're digging into this person's past. I was like, what the hell's happening? This is free speech. This is the internet. I can say what I want to say. You know, my wife, she's a big, she loves Kind of Funny. She really loves Colin Moriarty, believe it or not. Uh, probably more than me. She said if, if I died, then he could have her. So my wife really loves Colin. Uh, and so she told me, she was like, this place is not the kind of place for that. You can't really come in here and be controversial. These people will, will silence you and they'll get you out of here. So I said, fuck it, I'll leave it alone. But the Kind of Funny community has been cultivated by Greg. And if you ask me, Tim Geddes and even... Kevin, who is, you know, used to be the help. He's kind of part of the group now. But this, these guys have a super liberal agenda. Uh, and I, I guess you would call it progressive, but I, I seem to think it's regressive to, to make a person less than they aspire to be, to shout a person down and tell a person who has a dissenting point of view that they're wrong because they don't agree with you. And it seems like that's kind of the atmosphere that kind of funny has been going for. Hey, we're all friends here. No one's going to say anything bad. No one's going to say anything mean. If you say something mean, other people don't respond by being mean. Everybody be nice. We're snowflakes. <laughs> That's really the only way I can describe that kind of mentality. You're really like a snowflake 
you know, and you're just a part of this big snowstorm of snowflakes. And that's really the, the kind of, it's, that has been bothering me for a long time, uh, to be totally honest, to be, you know, to like these guys, to like the content that they create, but also know that it, if there's something, you know, that I adamantly just d totally disagree with, and, and I feel like, you know, it's bullshit, that I can't actually say that, because, you know, I'll have 200 comments in the comment section say, hey man, this is kind of funny, and we don't do that here. And that's really the atmosphere these guys have cultivated. And I don't think that that really jived well with, with, with Colin, to be totally honest. But getting on with the subject of this video, I want to catch, catch you guys up on what's going on, how these guys are feeling, what the community is doing, and what potentially is going to happen uh, to Kind of Funny and uh, to the channel and to the business. Because, you know, I honestly feel like they could still fix this. They could still, you know, make this right. But I don't know if they will. So let's look at what's been going on with kind of funny and its subscribers okay so over on social blade which is a media site which allows you to see what's been going on uh, with certain youtube channels you guys can check mine too uh when you go to the kind of funny youtube channel if you write kind of funny in the search bar you see that it's a total grade of b for the kind of funny channel and when you look at the subscribers up until monday which is the day this news broke they were consistently getting more and more subscribers. They were getting, you know, I'd say an average of 40, you know, 30 to 40 subscribers a day on average. And last Monday, they got 446. So it must have been some good videos that day. But as you guys can see, on Monday, on the 13th, they lost almost 1,500. The following day, they lost 900. And today's Wednesday. The day is not over yet. And I'm sure it'll be more than it is now by the end of the day. But so far, 272 people have left their YouTube channel. Now, if I was a part of Kind of Funny, this would be pretty scary news. You know, they're, they're at 226,000 subscribers. If this was to happen for, you know, nine months, they would be down to zero, which, you know, they're losing subscribers, they're not gaining. So obviously people are pretty upset with the uh, ousting of Colin. I feel like it was an ousting as well because Colin did not go with a liberal agenda. So obviously people are, are leaving uh, this community in droves because their average, their daily averages now are two people losing per day. All right? So, which isn't, you know, totally bad. It really isn't horrible. But if that average were to stay that way, you know, they'd be, they'd be down to no subscribers in no time. Now, let's look at the, some of their latest YouTube videos. We'll go to, um, let's go to the YouTube video. It says, people I want to be friends with that aired uh, today. It aired this morning. At, at the time of you know me looking at this, there's 8,942 views. Now look at the dislikes to the likes. This is not the norm for Kind of Funny. Uh, kind of Funny normally gets, I would say, 80 to 90 percent likes and very few dissenting comments. Let's just go back one week to the Nintendo World Championship controversy video. In this video, you can see Colin's there, you know, goofing off in the background. He's got you got Nick Scarpino and, and Greg Miller. Thirty-four thousand likes. You got seven hundred and forty-four likes. Thirty-four thousand one hundred ninety-five views. Seven hundred forty-four likes and thirty-seven dislikes. So, for this channel to go from having very few dislikes compared to likes to that ratio, for the dislikes to actually increase to the point where there are more dislikes than likes, it means that the community, as a whole feels very disheartened with the decisions that have been made by, I would say, upper management, which would be Colin and Greg. Uh, Nick and Tim can talk, and, 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 and even Kevin can talk, but I feel that upper management in this company has always been Colin and Greg. They actually built this themselves, and they brought their friends along. So that's a pretty telling sign that the community as a whole uh, is pretty frustrated with the decisions uh, that have been made by, by I, I would say Greg Miller and probably at this point Tim Geddes I don't feel that Nick Scarpino is quite as guilty that's my heart I'm just telling you the way I feel because body language and the way that certain people reacted when Colin was ousted there was like one guy on, on this in this cast who seemed very happy you know during that video where Colin was leaving and, and you know Nick cried and that was the emotional thing you could tell Nick was really heartbroken but Tim Geddes did not seem very heartbroken or sad about this situation. And in fact, I felt that he saw an empty chair 
which was one that was across from Greg Miller, who was like the behemoth of the channel, that he could fill and potentially fill that spot and, and take over as Colin Moriarty or take that notoriety from Colin, which I don't think could ever happen. But it's kind of, you know, telling that at least one guy didn't appear to be very sad about the situation. Even Kevin uh, appeared very frustrated over Colin leaving, but I just didn't feel it from Tim Geddes. Now, this is something that I actually said. I left a comment. It's a short comment, and, you know, I left it an hour ago, and this video is, you know, a few hours old, but this is the way I felt. Time to vote with your wallets, guys. It's true. Who says that? Kind of funny. They say, vote with your wallets. If you don't like a game, if the developer's doing some shit you don't like, vote with your wallets. Don't buy the game. Don't support it. And they won't do it again. Now, we can vote with our dislike bar, but that's still paying these guys. It doesn't matter how many dislikes you, 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 you tack on top of a video. If you have a million dislikes, that's still a million views. So the dislikes don't matter. But if you vote with your wallets, how do you vote with your wallets for kind of funny? I know there's going to be kind of funny huge fans. I'm a huge fan myself. Who say, Beastly, this is blasphemy. You can't, you can't feel this way. Well, you can't tell me how to feel. You know, when I came with Colin and Greg from IGN, I came with Colin and Greg. Them together as an entity to continue what they had kind of built at IGN, and I expected that. And when I pledged Patreon support, I expected them to do that. And when they announced that they were creating a PlayStation podcast on that couch, and uh, Greg said, hey, you remember that podcast we used to do? And Colin was like, yeah. He said, you want to do it again? And Colin was like, yeah. I fucking flipped out in my house. I, I ran through the apartment. I was in my apartment. I screamed to my wife and said, they're, big. they're bringing back Podcast Beyond. I was super excited. It's a, And I'm sure a lot of you guys felt the same way. But now, it isn't that anymore. Now it's... And you know, if Ben and Jerry's went out of business and they only put the Jerry's ingredients inside there, would you like it? Some of you probably would. But a lot of people would be like, hey, something's not right here. It just isn't the same. And you might move over to Bluebell or to Mayfield. I'm just using food analogies because it's easy. But it's true. If they took out something that was supposed to be there, something that you agreed to, something that you paid for. And, and you know, just here's a great example. Say, for instance, you bought free packaged meals for a year. And you didn't, you know, you, you agreed to do it and the money came out of your, your wallet through Patreon. And halfway through the year one meal that you didn't or half of half of each meal just disappeared or they replaced it with something you didn't like say for instance they replaced your corn with sauerkraut you're like I don't like it. it's food yeah it's food but it's not what I like but would you you'd continue to pay for it wouldn't you probably not you'd probably call and call customer service and say I don't this is not what I want this is not what I signed up for. Therefore, I'm withdrawing my support. And I don't want this prepackaged shit anymore because it's not what it was in the beginning. That's how I feel. That's exactly how I feel here. And maybe that's an easier way for you guys to understand it. But in my, my comment, I said, time to pull our Patreon support and solidarity to show, kind of funny, that we don't approve of the very, quote, snowflake, end quote, way this situation was handled. After all, my subscription included Colin. An extremely important part of Kind of Funny. And that's exactly how I feel uh, in this situation. I know that Colin, more than likely, at least last week, probably would have said, Beastly, that's going too far. But I'm not sure that Colin would say that now. So let's go to the next part of the video. And trust me, at the end of the video, you're, you're probably going to understand why Colin probably wouldn't say that. But let's go to the next part of this video I want to talk about. I want to talk about the liberal agenda. The liberal agenda that seems to be kind of like cancer. And I know some people are like, no, all liberals aren't cancer. And I know that, you know, I, I used to be, I guess, what I would consider a liberal, you know, open to everything, wanted all inclusion, wanted everyone to be treated equally. But it became something else. It's kind of like the early, uh, the early feminists who thought that we're only fighting for women's rights. We want to be paid. We want to be able to go to work. We want people to treat us the same way they do men. Now it's completely different. Feminists believe that women should be treated special. And men should just be treated like men. Women, just because they have a vagina, should be treated special. They should be given extra. They should be, you shouldn't even have to work hard. Just be a woman. You should just get the job. And it became 
a, a kind of a sick amalgamation of thoughts that really did not fly in what the original idea was. And to me, that's what the liberal agenda has become. To be liberal in the past meant that you were for the people. You, you, you were for equal rights and, and equal uh, race rights and no one should be treated different, differently because of their religion. Now, to be liberal has taken, to me, a hundred steps in the wrong direction. Now, if you're liberal, if someone says something that, you, that offends you, they are the problem. If, if, if you have someone speaking at a college, now liberals will go to that college and start fires and flip cars. If a person is standing for a particular cause that liberals don't agree with, they will jump out of their cars and drag them down the street and beat them. Liberals have become kind of the cancer, and they hide behind the guise that being a liberal is a good thing. So I'm not a liberal. I'm, I'm not what we consider liberals anymore. I still have liberal ideas, but I also have conservative ideas. And so to me, I'm just a human being. I don't want to be put into a, a jar of something. I have liberal ideas and beliefs, and, and just like I have conservative ideas and beliefs. But in California, which is a cesspool of liberals, it's like the perfect storm of nothing but snowflakes. You know, 9% of the people in, in California voted for Trump. This isn't about presidents, but it's about ideas. And when you live in California, to be a person like Colin Moriarty it has to be extremely tough. And that's why I respect him even more. This guy sits at a table with three or four guys who have who are the antithesis of his of his belief system. They don't believe what he thinks. They think that everything pretty much that he believes in is crap. And in this place, to be a dissenting point of view is the enemy. And that's what he's been treated like. I don't know if you guys saw the kind of funny morning show a few months ago where Colin got into it with Kevin because Colin did not vote for Donald Trump. He didn't vote for Trump. He does not agree with Trump and he does not like Trump as a person, which I totally understand. But he also doesn't like Hillary Clinton. And he also said Hillary Clinton was a criminal, which she, in my opinion, clearly is. She clearly is a criminal. She's done some very questionable things. I mean, her, her past is marred with controversy, going back to Watergate. You know, people have died around Hillary Clinton due to dubious circumstances. Hillary Clinton installed a private server in her basement and undermined the sanctity of the uh, State Department and basically gave away state secrets to whoever wanted to hack her unsecured server. Just a whole bunch of crazy stuff, you know? She went before Congress and told bold-faced lies. I mean, a lot of people will be in prison for a lot less. So, Colin is right. <laughs> wow, I just said that. Colin is right. She is a criminal. She's done things that are very bad. The director of the FBI, James Comey, said, Hey, look, no reasonable prosecutor would prosecute this lady. But what she did was highly negligent. She'd done things that no one in her position should have done. She sent and received classified information over an unsecured server. This, 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 this is crime. This is actual crime. And he was shouted down by those who know nothing. He was shouted down by Kevin, who said, she's not a criminal. She was never convicted. Well, criminals sometimes don't get convicted, Kevin. Sometimes criminals go through their crime spree before they actually get caught, which, uh, just in case you didn't know, Hillary Clinton is still under FBI investigation. She still has numerous investigations into her ties with dubious places through the Clinton Foundation. She's still being looked at. I wouldn't sign that letter so quick if I were you, Kevin. But the point is, Colin was shouted down by Kevin, who knows very little about this political climate. Very knows very little about Hillary Clinton's past. He knows very little about what Hillary Clinton did in New York and how she didn't bring any jobs back and how things got worse. And Colin was there. But this guy was still shouting him down because it's cool to be a liberal in California. Greg is a liberal. He doesn't shout Colin, Colin down because I'm sure he knows Colin's smarter than he is. But Tim is the worst. I'm sure you guys know that. You know, I'm not one of the guys in the comments calling Tim names, but whenever I hear any kind of debate and Tim opens his mouth, usually it pisses me off. Because he has no facts and he goes surely based on emotion. He doesn't know anything. And so, to be in California and have Colin Moriarty's mindset and his ideas is a very tough thing to do. And I commend him for it because guess what? Being there for over 10 years and not changing his point of view and working at IGN, which is nothing but a liberal cesspool and going and doing his own venture with Greg and these guys and not changing his point of view and staying firm on his belief system means he's a very 
sturdy mind. He's a person who stands on principle and he's not going to change because other people feel bad. And for that, I fucking commend you, honestly. And I want to get to my last little little bit of this video. I know it's kind of, it's going to be going on for a minute. Minutes. How does Colin feel now? How is Colin feeling now that his friends uh, have pretty much thrown him under the bus? He's gone through a lot over this tweet. And if you go to his Twitter page, which is No Taxation, you'll see lots and lots of support. People have been showing him huge amounts of support, and I support him as well. And I'm going to support him in the future, unlike Kind of Funny Games. I'm going to give him money because I believe in what he's saying. I believe in his principle. I believe that he's intelligent enough that no matter what he does, he's going to be successful. And he didn't change. He didn't change. He didn't give in to the, to the pressure. But one little thing he left on Twitter that just warmed my heart until I really read it and I understood what he was saying. And I want to share it with you. This is what he said on his Twitter page. He said, to thousands of you who have reached out to me in the past 24 hours, this message is for you. And it's an awesome picture of him and his girlfriend. And I don't know his dog's name, but the guy looks fucking happy. And that's a beautiful thing. But this is what it says on his Twitter, on his Facebook page in the link on Twitter. It says, I just want to let you all know that I've seen and continue to see the ridiculous outpouring of support you've been shooting towards me. Thousands of you have reached out and or said kind words, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook or Reddit or YouTube or even email. I received more texts and DMs yesterday than I probably received in the previous six months combined. I couldn't possibly answer everything even if I tried, but I'm reading as much as I can and I appreciate all the good vibes so many of you are sending my way. I had no idea I touched so many lives to this extent and it makes me feel good to have had such a positive effect on so many of you. For what it's worth, so many of you had an equally positive effect on me. The point? I hear you, guys and gals, loud and clear and I tip my hat in your direction. The future looks awfully bright. It's amazing how many hands have been offered to me and how many doors are creaking their way open. It's astounding how many good folks are out there willing to help. And to those people, you know who you are and I appreciate you more than you know. Change is hard, the unknown is scary and these heroes have worked to make it just a little bit easier. My family, in particular, has been nothing short of stellar. My mom and dad, my sisters and brother, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, uncles and aunts, nieces and nephews, cousins, my best friends, listen to this, my best friends, Ramon and Mike, and so many others from both past and present. I've never seen a squad so quickly form a phalanx in front of someone they love. Led steadfastly by my amazing girlfriend, Erin, who has been by my side for every millisecond, the absolute love of my life, and the rock I can count on not crumbling. My family is as fucking real as it gets, that much is for sure. Let me thank you all again for your kindness. Not only does it not go unnoticed, it is the fuel that's keeping me going until you and I finally talk about what's next. More soon, Colin. You, sir, deserve every great thing that's coming your way. You stood fast in the face of adversity, you didn't change, and when everyone, including who you thought, where your best friends completely turn their backs on you, you still remain the same. That is, I respect you more now than I did, than I have ever respected you. And I'm sure lots of you guys feel the same way. But there is an underlying story in this, this little message that Colin sent to his fans and his supporters. That first of all, his family means more to him than anything. And all these people he named have been amazing. And that this face of, I guess, question it's scary change is scary and this was not something that's been coming down the pipeline as greg and the other guys at kind of funny have alluded to because as he said here change is hard the unknown is scary the fact that he didn't know this was coming is scary this is something that came out of nowhere Colin's telling us a story in his own way without telling us a story he also alluded to his girlfriend aaron who was incredible and very beautiful way to go colin and his best friends, who are Ramon and Mike. Before this letter, his best friends, I know Ramon's always been a great friend of his childhood, but his best friends have always been the kind of funny guys. I know Greg was always mentioned. This letter lets you know that things have changed, that inside Colin's mind, 
what used to be no longer exists. The veil has been pulled from in front of his eyes and he sees the world for what it really is. He sees that Greg and Tim, and who knows about Nick, chose the business over their friendship. That before they had a business, all they had was one another. And once that business became profitable and they were making thousands of dollars and people were donating money through Patreon and they wanted to go one direction and more than likely Colin didn't want to go that direction and they also had a political point of view and they had this PC culture on their YouTube channel. Colin didn't like the fact that on IGN, on Podcast Beyond, they couldn't cuss. They couldn't curse. They did for a long time and then IGN stepped in and said no more cursing on the podcast until they couldn't do it. And, and Colin many times said, I don't like this. I don't like people policing my thoughts. The fact that Kind of Funny started to do that and the fact that Kind of Funny, the, the group, the community, started to fall into this liberal cesspool of snowflaking probably infuriated the hell out of Colin because I know it would have done me. So, what do we do from this point? Are we going to continue to support Kind of Funny? Are you guys going to continue to give them your money through Patreon? Do you think that kind of funny as it is now is what you agreed to in the beginning just because of Greg? Some of you will say yes, some will say no. To me, the answer is no. You know why? This is why. It's the principle of the whole thing. It's principalities in this. Big Worm said it right. It's principalities. They're principles. And for you to be a YouTube channel, community, website, Twitch page, that touts the power of friendship, that touts the power of togetherness, that has been the friend of Colin Moriarty for 10 years, Greg. The principle is this, that if you tell me that your best friend means everything to you, but you turn your back on your best friend for people who are more than likely not even in your fan base, because Twitter is just crazy. If you turn your back on your best friend for your company, for revenue, to stabilize, you know, uh, your, your fan base and keep people quiet and keep people moving forward and apologize. I don't stand for that. I stand for my friends. I stand for my family. And what you did was wrong. And what's going on with your YouTube channel is wrong. And I honestly don't wish any ill will on you guys. I hope you guys are successful. But the thing is, you're going to have to find it without my support. And I know a lot of people feel that way. I mean, look at the people leaving the channel. What you did was wrong. You should have stood for something. You should have stood for your friend. Colin said it on Twitter, after the fact, that he he was so proud of all the people on Twitter standing up for him. These are fans, people like me, who stood up and said, this is politically correct bullshit. You should be allowed to say how you feel. You told a joke, and all these people are overreacting Tell him to kiss your ass and keep moving. He expected that from you guys. Tim, Nick, he expected that from you. Okay? The fa the guys over at IGN who saw problems with Colin's little joke, he expected that from you. But Colin learned a big lesson. Who his real people are, who his real family is, and who his real friends are. And I'm thinking that in the future he's going to feel differently about relationships and friendships. And unfortunately, it's a lesson learned from Kind of Funny. You guys sign off in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about this. What are you going to do? How are you going to support Kind of Funny? How are you not going to support him? What are you going to do when it comes to Colin Moriarty? Are you going to support everybody? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to give a thumbs up. Show support for the channel. Join the Facebook group. Follow me on Twitter. You can share your videos and your thoughts. Make a video. Go to BeastlyGamer.com and share your video there. And it will be up on the channel later. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time.